In this video, I'm going to show you how to install and configure a MySQL database on an EC2 instance running Amazon Linux 2. So I've already logged into my AWS console and I'm just going to select the EC2 option here because we're going to launch a new instance immediately. So let's launch an instance. Uh, we'll go with Amazon Linux 2 and I'm going to select the T2 micro just because it's part of the free tier and we'll go to configure instance details. And for all of this, uh, unless you want to get into networking and custom VPCs, we can leave all of this alone. Right now, the default settings are absolutely fine. Uh, if we go next, add storage, the uh, default storage option is fine for now. We could always change that later. Um, tags, I'm going to not add any tags. The security group, this is the firewall for the EC2 instance. So we could open uh, up any ports that we want to allow access to from the internet or from uh, certain IP addresses. Uh, right now, I'm going to leave this just at port 22 so I can connect using SSH. But if I wanted to be able to connect to the MySQL database uh, from my laptop or from anywhere else in the world, I would have to modify this security group and allow connections on port, I think 3306 is the MySQL port. Uh, right now, I'm just going to leave this as the default SSH port so I can just connect to it from my laptop. So we'll review and launch and I'll click launch here and I'm just going to uh, leave it as my default keeper that I've already created. If you haven't created a keeper, you probably want to create one so that you can SSH onto this thing. Uh, so once that is launched, let's view the instance just pending. I just have to wait for this to, uh, I can't remember, turn into green. I don't remember what it says, but it turns green. Click the connect option here. Uh, and I'm just going to copy the uh, example SSH command uh, for the SSH client. And then I can just open up my terminal window, paste that in here. I'm just going to make this a little bit bigger. Um, and then my SSH key is located in my, uh, what is it? Yeah, dot SSH folder, I think on my Mac. Let's see if that works. Yep, that's good. So I'm now connected to my EC2 instance uh, from Terminal, which is great. Maybe I'll actually open this up in a new window. There we go. Um, so yeah, I'm on my EC2 instance. So now I just need to install MySQL on this EC2 instance, and I'm going to install MySQL version 8 of the community server uh, using the yum package manager. So it's just two lines in here that I'm going to copy and paste in, and this will install the MySQL community server. And I'll put those lines of code in the description of the video, so check there. And it took a couple of minutes to install, uh, but once it's installed, we can start this up using sudo systemctl start MySQL. Um, MySQL D, sorry for the daemon. And this will now start MySQL as a daemon process in the background. Should only take a moment, there we go. And uh, I'm also gonna enable it so that every time I restart this EC2 instance, it makes sure that my SQL is always running. And now that I've done that, I wanna be able to log in, and by default, I should be able to log in as the root user of my SQL. But first I need to grab the temporary password for the root user, and I can do that just by running sudo grep temporary password on this mysqld.log file. Uh, and again, I'm gonna put all of these code examples in the description of the video, so check there, and you can just copy and paste them. Uh, so this will give me the root password here, there we go. Um, so now I should just be able to run mysql-u root dash P, hit enter, and then paste in the password right there. And I'm now in MySQL as the root user. Uh, and I can, you know, start creating new users, creating databases, doing whatever. However, the first thing I need to do, uh, because that was a temporary password, is actually change the password of the root user. And I can do this by writing alter user root at localhost identified with MySQL. Uh, native oops, password by, and then I'm just gonna use, I don't know, my new pass one exclamation. I think that has to be a number and a special character in there. Uh, there we go. So I now have changed the root user's password to my new pass one. So that's great, and I'm logged into my SQL. And the next thing I wanna do is create a database, create some tables, maybe even populate uh, some data into those tables. 
And generally when I set up a new database on a server, I already have the schema written. I already have maybe some data that I want to insert into the database. Maybe I just have a MySQL dump that I want to insert straight into the database here. So what I'm likely going to want to do is copy some sort of SQL file onto this instance and then actually put that into the database to get everything set up. So I'm going to open a new terminal window here just on my Mac, uh, not on the EC2 instance. So this is on my personal laptop and I'm going to CD to my desktop because on my desktop, I have a Lord of the Rings.sql file that contains a bunch of stuff. Uh, the most important part is the uh, statements to create a Lord of the Rings database and then create a table of characters and then insert a bunch of characters into that database. So this is a file that's going to set up database, set up a table, insert some data. And I just want to get that onto the server and run it in MySQL. And I can do this using SSH uh, and the SCP application, which is really similar to the SSH application, uh, but instead of just um, logging into the instance and getting access through the terminal, if I change SSH to SCP, and this is the exact same command I was running earlier, I can now, after I specify the path to the SSH key, I'm going to specify which file I want to upload. So it was Lord of the rings.sql and I'm going to copy that from my personal computer all the way up to the EC2 instance uh, and I'm just going to put that in the home directory. So let's just copy the file from my laptop up to the EC2 instance and that should only take a second. And now back on my EC2 instance I'm going to exit my SQL and if I look at my home directory I can see there's my SQL file. So actually immediately I need to log back into my SQL to run this uh, my new pass one exclamation nope my new pass one exclamation mark there we go uh and now i can just run this file i mean there's a few ways of running it but i like to log in and then i'm just going to source the file so source um lord of the rings dot sequel there we go. So it has now uh, created the database, created the tables, inserted uh, 51 different characters. So if I select name from characters, I can see that all of the characters uh, appear on the screen here. So this is great. I have my SQL set up and I have a Lord of the Rings database with a bunch of characters in it. Now, most likely I'm either going to want to be able to access this from uh, different computers like my personal computer, or I'm going to want to install a web app also on this server or on the internet somewhere that can connect to this database and actually pull this data and do something with it. So I'm going to pretend that I want to be able to access uh, this data from a web application that's running on the same EC2 instance. And I'm going to create a user that has access just to this Lord of the Rings database that I could then insert that username and password into my application rather than using the root username and password. So in the interest of time, I'm just going to copy and paste this in here. Uh, just create a user, Sam at localhost. So this is a user that can only access the database from the same instance, from the same EC2 instance, from nowhere else. Uh, and I'm just going to give it the same password. And I'm going to give Sam access to the Lord of the Rings database. So I could then log out of my SQL and I can use uh, Sam this new user, Sam, to access all of the data in this database. And this is what I would use if I was setting up a web app on this EC2 instance. Um, I mean, I could even log in as Sam now. Uh, my new pass one, boom. And Sam has access to the Lord of the Rings database and the standard information schema uh, database here, but wouldn't have access to any other databases in this MySQL installation unless I allowed access to that user. So that's one use case. I could use this SAM user to access the database from a web app on the same instance. Uh, but another use case is I might just want to access this database from anywhere. I might want to be able to uh, open MySQL Workbench on my laptop and actually connect to this database and use it in that way instead. So for that, I need to create another user that has access pretty much from anywhere in the world. Like any computer that I'm on, I want to be able to access this database using this user and password. So before I can create a new user, I'm going to need to log out again and log back in as the root user. And then the steps are pretty much the same as creating the last user that we made. Uh, I'm going to create a new user called Frodo and Frodo is going to be able to access this database from anywhere in the world. This sounds way nerdier than I expected it to. Uh, so instead of using localhost, I'm user percent to basically say just access from anywhere. Uh, so there's my new Frodo user. And then I'm going to grant all privileges on all databases within my SQL to Frodo from wherever. So this is a very open, unsecured user that can access any of the databases from anywhere. 
which can be handy when testing things out. You just want to host a database and try things out, um, but you'd want more security in a real application. So really, I should now be able to, from my laptop, um, maybe my SQL Workbench, or maybe just from Terminal, I'm just gonna use Terminal, I should be able to connect to this database um, in the same way, dash U Frodo, dash P, but I'm also going to add a dash H for the host. And this is going to be the public IP address of the EC2 instance. If I go back to the EC2 instance here, and I grab that public IP address, I should be able to paste that in here and connect to the MySQL database uh, using my new pass one exclamation. But this isn't gonna work right now for one important reason. The firewall on the EC2 instance won't allow any connections on port 3306. It's only allowing connections on port 22 for SSH. So in order for this to work, I first need to modify the firewall on the EC2 instance. So if I go back to the AWS console and I just go over to uh, security here, I can click on this security group that I created during the launch wizard and I forgot to change the name, so it's just launch wizard five. Uh, but if I click on that security group, I come in here and I can scroll down to the inbound rules. And these are the rules that determine what kind of TCP connections can be made to this EC2 instance. So I'm gonna edit the inbound rules because all I wanna do is add a new rule right here. Uh, and I think MySQL might be an option. Yeah, it is. So I'm gonna allow any connection uh, on port 3306 and I'm gonna allow this from anywhere. So any IP address, including my own, should be able to connect to this EC2 instance on port 3306 and I'm gonna save the rules. And that just updates, oh, my terminal timed out. <laughs> my terminal timed out uh, trying to connect. And that just updates the firewall, so I should be able to come back over here, there we go, uh, and run the exact same command, my new pass one exclamation. And now it can actually connect to uh, the MySQL database on the EC2 instance. So I don't need to first connect to the EC2 instance using SSH. I can just connect to this MySQL database from anywhere in the world. Uh, and I can use uh, Lord of the Rings and select name from characters. There we go. So I'm now accessing the database remotely, uh, just in a slightly different way. This is not secure. This does uh, mean that anyone could try and hack into your database and would have a much easier time doing it, but can be handy in some use cases. That's it for this video. You should now be able to install a MySQL database on an Amazon Linux 2 EC2 instance. And if you're interested in how to set up web apps on EC2 instances, check out some of my other videos. I'll leave the links in the description. Fun.